Welcome to Roots of Faith. I'm Renee Richard, and today we're in Point Capit Parish along the banks of False River, visiting St. Augustine Parish here in New Roads. This is a parish that had its beginnings in the 1920s. It was founded for the African-American population that lives um, in this area. It is one of our non-territorial parishes, and it, the, it was founded by the Josephite Order here through the help of St. Catherine Drexel. So in my opinion, it's one of those holy places because she had her fingers in the beginnings of it. Um, my guest today will be Father Patrick Healy, who has been pastor here, and he's the former PR director for the Josephite Order, so hopefully it will go nice and smoothly. Join us as we explore this wonderful parish. I have as my guest today, Father Patrick Healy, and Father Patrick is um, a Josephite, and really yes. that's of the order, it's the St. Joseph Society of the Sacred Heart is, is the official title. Um, we refer to them as, as Josephites. The Josephites, um, right. And the Josephite order has been here uh, since this church began, correct? Yes, yeah. In 1922, but tell us a little bit about yourself, Father. Well, uh, again, my name is Patrick Healy. I'm a, a Josephite priest. I was ordained Ooh, 1976. So, but actually, I started off uh, with the Diocese of Los Angeles as a seminarian through the minor seminary and mm -hmm. first two years of college. Uh, but that was back in the 60s. And, um, you know, those were pretty trying times. They were very challenging times. Correct. And so I began looking for a religious uh, order, and I came across the Josephites. And the uh, vocation director was a very, uh, very good man. He, uh, he wrote to me, he uh, answered all my questions, and then invited me to join. So I uh, joined up with the Josephites and entered the novitiate uh, in uh, 1969. And um, just from there on. That's it. Yeah, it was great. Um, since that time... Uh, I've served in many parishes, uh, many of our Josephite parishes across the country, but I had a unique experience of being an active duty army chaplain uh, for four years, and I served uh, with what's called the MFO, the Multinational Force and Observers. Uh, it's a peacekeeping mission on the Gaza Strip wow. uh, in uh, Egypt. And so I served there, uh, two tours of duty over there, but one of the uh, blessings that I received was, uh, you know, the, we're very close to the Holy Land. Yeah. And so I was able to lead um, groups of soldiers oh, wow. on tours of the Holy Land. That's awesome. And so we'd take a four-day trip. Uh, we'd go all through Israel and visit the Holy Land sites and um, then come back and pick up another group. Wow, so I got I became a really bit of a tour experience. director. Yes. It was a very unique experience. But the uh, the great thing was a lot of these young soldiers were very unevangelized. You know, mm -hmm. they they had been maybe to their Bible classes when they were children or uh, had gone to church as children. But you know, as they as they grew, they faded away. But when they saw the Holy Land sites, that's when the questions began. Father, is this really where Jesus walked? Father, right. is this where you know this happened or that happened? And so it was a rather unique experience to uh, to deal with those questions. And a lot of the soldiers returned back to the church. That was that, uh, it was a great experience. That's awesome. Yeah. So were they all Catholic or no? Mixed? No, so it was a, it was a probably about the same as the U.S. population. I'd say probably fifty percent were non-practicing Protestants. Uh -huh. There was probably 25% were non-practicing Catholics and a few mixed in uh, other religions. But, um, but it was a great it experience. Brought them, back, brought them back to At least got God them thinking. The yeah, Jesus. we got them thinking about, the, about their faith and where they had come from. It was, it was really a very uh, blessed experience. That's awesome. And thank you for your service. Um, yeah. How long have you been here now? I've been here in New Roads, ooh, for almost eight years. Okay, so yeah. uh, um, I heard once Bishop Hughes once said at one of the one of our functions at the diocese many years ago when he was in Baton Rouge that your body re 
re, um, produces all of its sales over a seven-year period. So he was now a Southerner, <laughs> so I guess that makes you an official Louisiana <laughs> Southerner. So um, that's awesome, though. So tell us a little bit about um, St. Augustine here. Um, what kind of parish is this? Like, what, is, what are your numbers here and families here? Tell us a little bit about Well, St. Augustine, it has a long history, uh, back to the 20s. Mm -hmm. um, we have probably about 400 and 450 families okay. that are registered mm -hmm. here. Um, you know, New Roads is a rather small community. Right. Uh, there's only 4,000 people in the entire area. So uh, it is rather small. But uh, the people that are here, I would say it's more of a family kind of parish. Good. You know, the families mm -hmm. are, are very important here. And they have a long history. Their grandparents were married Absolutely. and baptized here and, and whatever. So uh, the people are very um, loyal to the parish. And they're also very generous to the parish. Uh, we have, I don't know if I should say this, we have no money problems. Awesome. You know, <laughs> which is rather on you. That's the first time I could say that. Um, and um, unfortunately, though, nowadays, the older children, mm -hmm. college age on up, Okay. They tend to move away because of the job situation. Right. This is a rural area. It's yeah, a rural isolated area. isolated here unless you can work at one of the plants. Well, a lot of the farms now are controlled by the larger corporations, mm -hmm. you know, so there's, there's not much family farming anymore. Uh, so they have to move away for jobs. Okay. And, uh, but they do come home, you know, to visit, that sort of thing. But um, we're, really, we're really focused on the... Um, the grandparents and the parents who are the ones who remain uh, here. We were talking about, you know, how long this parish has been in existence in 1923. Um, it's early history. The people of African-American descent um, that were going to church at St. Mary's, and when the pastor there, Father Hose, saw that he had roughly 400 or 500 um, different people. Uh, the, the movement back there was for them to start their own churches, the African Americans start mm -hmm. their own churches, and that's what they started looking at in you know the early 20s. Right. Um, and you and I were talking about this before we came on the air, but um, it was the pastor there that contacted, she is now St. Drexel, Saint Catherine for Drexel, yes. help in establishing a parish for the persons of African or African-American descent that were in this community, mm -hmm. you know, wanting their own parish. With her, she contacted the Josephites, and y'all, I say y'all, I'm in the South, uh, <laughs> the Josephite order, the, the society, uh, ministers to the African-American yes. community. Um, and so y'all came at that point and have been here ever since. So um, this parish was uh, started, the first priest that came here, Father Hornet, um, he um, they first started out having mass in, in a, I think, an old store an old that store, they rented. Yes. But he was very aggressive in petitioning for funds from the from the archbishop, from um, I'm sure um, St. Catherine Drexel. Catherine I always Drexel. want to say Mother Drexel. Now she's a saint. I have to always watch myself, <laughs> St. Drexel, um, to get it off the ground. And within a year, so the first mass ever celebrated for the faith community here was Christmas Eve in 1922. And then the following year, according to our records, um, the church had been built. And so they celebrated Mass um, in the church Christmas Eve of 23. But then they, it wasn't dedicated until the following May. It was in, right. in May of 1924. So being so, this looks like it's the original church he built. You said y'all weren't 100% sure. Yeah, no, this about, is the original, oh, this is the original church. church. Yeah, this is definitely um, the original church. And this church houses what you said about... 250, About 250 200. people, right? So, and it's a beautiful church. So, when you, we're looking at the 1920s, it does kind of have that that uh, craftsman mm -hmm. look to it. Um, so, we have beautiful uh, the Stations of the Cross. Now, the windows are a new addition to this, correct? They yeah, were apparently they later. did a renovation back in the uh, early 80s, okay. and they added these windows. Um, and I love them because they have names on them. Yes, they were They're dedicated. They were to dedicated to families, families who purchased the window for the church, right? Um, is there any particular theme, or they're, they're just sometimes there is. No, it's just sort of a general, uh, general Catholic. Uh, right, I see teachings. baptism. You in the first baptism. With you the have the sacraments the over here. Very uh, good. Picture of Jesus and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yes, it's very beautiful, very quaint. Um, so, um, in 
looking at the church here, I mean, our grounds, your campus itself, uh, I believe it's the original land that they were able to procure. Have y'all added to that? Do you know? Well, the actually the land was donated to us by St. Mary's Church. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's the original, y'all are on the original. Yes, from land. here all the way down half a mile to uh, the uh, school down there, Rosenwald uh, mm -hmm. Elementary School. That's all our land. Well, it used to okay. be a swamp, <laughs> as much which as I guess is why is. they wanted to get rid of it. But uh, they drained the swamp and uh, cleared the land, so we have enough room here for the school, for the church, the old convent, which is now our novitiate house, right. and then uh, a large cemetery. Right, yeah. we'll talk about each of those various points. Right. But on these grounds here, what is y'all's parish hall was a school at one time. Right, that right. was uh, St. Augustine School. It was an elementary school, and it was uh, run, of course, by the sisters. Mm -hmm. But um, back in the late 60s, uh, the bishops decided to integrate the schools, so they decided to close us down. We did keep the 7th and 8th grade for a while, mm -hmm. but eventually that closed. So the uh, school then became our church hall. So again, that was renovated and, um, and served the parish. But still serves the parish, right? It still serves the <laughs> parish, but it had to be renovated again in the uh, mid-80s. And um, we now use it for our social functions and for religious ed and all that sort of thing. And it's very nice because they have another function going on here this morning. And I went over there looking, um, yeah. thinking I could get in the church. And so I saw a lot of uh, people from the diocese over right, there. Yeah. So I got a chance to actually see the inside of it. And it's very nice, yes. Mm -hmm. So... But the school that was here um, was begun, and Mother Drexel, or St. Drexel, had Saint her hand Drexel. in helping to establish that. Um, also, not long after um, the parish began, you know, to have their own school, and it grew, you know, one grade at a time, as they usually do. Um, we're in a rural area, so the school, the Catholic school's um, education is available here in Point Capi. Um, it's Point Capi um, inappropriate. Uh, it's, uh, I believe that's it. It's an inappropriate. Um, Catholic school, grades right. K through 12, um, that serves um, all the different parishes in this region and probably part of North Iberville as well, which is why it's called interparochial. Mm -hmm. um, so there is Catholic education available here. It is. Because yes. I believe in my research, the numbers had dwindled in the 70s. The elementary school had like 146 students, and so they couldn't, the nuns d decided, the sisters um, decided to, to go d use their, their skills. Mm -hmm. Elsewhere, elsewhere, which is what happens, you know, so often, and it was integrated into Catholic Point P. Right. But you do have several years of good education here before we they do. decided to um, to merge everything. Very good. Um, also, we on the campus. You would tell us about the novitiate. Tell us a little bit about. Well, about that. Uh, the old convent, which is uh, just next to the church here, uh, was abandoned, I guess, when the sisters left and it was not used for, well, 25 years. Wow. So two or three years ago, uh, we decided to renovate the house and to turn it into the novitiate for the Josephite order. Uh, so myself and some parishioners, we went over there and we just started gutting the place and renovated the house. And now we have uh, four novices and our novice director, Father Great. Doyle, and they live there and they, the boys that are um, studying to become Josephites, uh, they work here in the parish, that's, which is a real great. blessing. So they, they help with the CCD program. Uh, they uh, serve mass on Sundays when you know with the other servers, and uh, the people really seem to enjoy them. Um, this year we we have three seminarians from uh, Nigeria oh, wow. and one from Opelousas. So uh, it's, a, it's an interesting mixture. I bet. And the people really enjoy our seminarians, so they, uh, they've been a real blessing for the parish. When you say novitiate, that's for the whole United States? Yes. So yes. it's not a regional thing. This is no, this nationally is, this the novitiate. Is national here. novitiate, right. The novitiate that's here, this is, um, we said it's for the whole United States. Right, it's correct? a national, I guess a national campus, right? Uh, this is where all of our seminarians uh, have their novitiate year. 
Uh, this year, we're blessed. We have uh, three seminarians wow. from uh, Nigeria, one saying. from Opelousas, and uh, they will serve here for one year. Okay. And then the next class will come in. Okay, good. Now, when they when they enter your order, they're ordained. Your headquarters is. Our headquarters in is in Baltimore. Yes. So they will be ordained there. Well, versus... they're going to go back to school. Okay. They're going to go to Washington D.C. Okay. And uh, they're going to finish whatever theology they have left. And then they will be ordained to the diaconate. Right. And that will either be Baltimore or Washington area. Uh, they'll usually pick a different parish each time they ordain okay. so that right. people can see the ordinations. Right. I was just curious being when they were down here. I know they're not staying here and that they're seminarians, but I was, I was curious, I guess, it, logical that they would go where your headquarters right. is. Right. And then, uh, then, of course, then the next class will come in and we begin so the process so again. So it's That's a one-year right. novitiate. So this is the old convent. Now that's the the hall is on one side of the church. The novitiates to the north side, right, of of the church. Beyond that, y'all do have your own cemetery. Yes, we correct? have a rather large cemetery. I was surprised <laughs> when I drove up at the size of the cemetery. So obviously, it has been in existence since you began. Yes. Not before. Sometimes you know you have a cemetery on older ground, and then the church comes. But in your case, we know. The land came from St. Mary's. Right. So. So once they had the uh, swamp drained, then it became the cemetery. That's where the swamp. Right. Was. <laughs> that's okay. where the swamp was. It. And um, it's a rather large cemetery. We have two two sections. One is the we call it the old section, <laughs> where the uh, you see the the large markers, and then we have a new section which is all flat uh, plates okay. on the ground. But there are also some mausoleums. Okay, so the very people good. the people were asking for mausoleums. And we're getting ready to build another mausoleum. So very good. But you have you still have space if they want to be buried in the ground. We have enough space there for whatever they want. For correct? the next five hundred years. That's amazing. <laughs> now do you do the parishioners here participate like when come November with the Washing of the tombs, um, or do y'all have more perpetual? Yes, care every in the cemetery. The first, uh, well, I guess it's really the closest uh, Saturday evening to uh, uh, the Saints Feast of All, All Saints, Saints Day. Uh, we have a special mass for everyone who has died and was buried through Saint Augustine's mm -hmm. uh, during the past year, and so. Um, the, but the families of all the residents come and they paint their graves and I get everything curious. ready for, for the a celebration. It's such a Louisiana tradition. I figured it, it applied here as well. Yes, very um, much so. Very good. We've been talking about the physical surroundings here, but mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about the congregation here. So you do, um, you have your regular Sunday masses, but. This is one of those parishes you have mass every day? Every day, yes. Yeah, we have um, masses Monday through Saturday, and then, mm -hmm. of course, uh, the, uh, the weekend is a Saturday vigil at 4 p.m., Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Oh, good. And the 11 o'clock is more of our youth mass. Okay, great. So the children from our religious ed program, they have their classes on Sunday morning between the two masses, and then they come over to the 11 o'clock uh, for uh, Sunday celebration. Okay. The youth in the parish with CCD, do they have, do they participate in mass? Do they have their own choir or do they do guitar, anything like that? Yes, the, um, the youth, uh, we have youth mass at the 11 o'clock and right. on the first Sunday of every month, uh, the children do the readings, their lectors and that sort about. of thing. Yes. Okay. And we do have a youth choir. In fact, it's, uh, kind of propitious that you mention that because we're getting ready to uh, celebrate Black History Month during February. Absolutely. And uh, we have a special choir that we're putting together now to sing during those uh, Sundays of Black History Month. Oh, wow. So the youth and uh, the youth choir is very good. You know, good. The kids and are great. I take it you have a regular choir as well. Most we do, do, yes. We have, a, we have a regular choir that sings at the other masses. And uh, again, they do a great job. So, Is the music um, more traditional music? Is it more gospel, being it's an African-American community? It's probably a mixture of both. Of both? Yeah, it's good. a mixture of gospel and traditional music, yes. Okay. Yeah. Talking about ministries, what are some of the other ministries that are active here? Well, we have the usual ministries, mm -hmm. electors and Eucharistic oh, yes. ministers. Uh, of course, our religious education staff. Um, we have a 
kind of a unique program. On the last Saturday of every month, we have a dinner for anyone in the community who needs uh, some food. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, we call it Uplift, and uh, parishioners get together and they cook this meal. So people come in, walk in off the street, but we also deliver to the people that are shut ins. Mm -hmm. So we have about 100 to 125 people that we feed every last Tuesday of the month. Ladies Ultra Society and yeah, the, Peter Claver. Yeah, we have, of course, the Knights and mm -hmm. Ladies of Peter, Peter Claver. Claver. We have the Junior Daughters, the Junior Knights. Uh, they're very active as that well. That was probably one of the first organizations that started. From what I was reading, Once Y'all Became a Parish. Um, yes. That was one of the uh, first organizations to get to get going here. Yeah, it was the uh, 61st uh, uh, congregation, congregation or group in the in the country. Uh, the first one was at uh, Most Pure Heart of Mary in Mobile, Alabama. Wow. That, that's council number one, and then uh, we're number 61. Which really, but, yeah, is great. But they've, they've been active right from the beginning, yes. Very good. In your history, when I was researching this, um, when this parish started, they would have missions um, to get it off the ground. And over the first 15 years, they had y'all had five missions. Is that um, do y'all have any kind of fairs or any missions, anything like that in today's world? Because oftentimes you do, sometimes you don't. No, uh, we haven't recently had a mission, uh, but we are contemplating that. Awesome. The problem is finding the the right Someone preacher, to come. Right, That's right, the right preacher to come. Uh, Missions back in those days, back in the early 20s mm -hmm. and early 30s, uh, that was really their evangelization it, tool. It so much was. Yeah, it really and it, was. It was very successful in this part of the country. It was. And, um, but unfortunately, in more modern times, right. it's very difficult to get people to take the time off for a five-day mission. Maybe yeah, the nowadays best, the best, they do them one or two days. One or two days, but, right, exactly. But I didn't know if that had continued, because back then it was such a big thing, and it brought so many people into this parish, into this church. It did. When you read the history of, you know, how many communicants or how many people had their marriages blessed. That's right. In this community, you come from a long line of, um, it's because it's kind of isolated and um, and a lot of free people of color that lived here. And so within their caste system, oftentimes you were marrying your third cousin, which is legal, but you had to go through dispensations and they would go get married civilly. And then we see them come back to the church and get their marriages blessed. And one of the things I was reading about is your missions would bring so many of them back to having their marriages blessed. So it was a great way. I mean, they really boomed um, mm -hmm. you know, this parish in the beginning. Um, but so many fairs, so many times those missions have evolved into fairs and other parishes. Do y'all have any kind of annual fair, any, anything that y'all well, do for course, fundraising? Well, you know, this is Louisiana, so we have Mardi Gras. Okay. And, oh, and this town shuts itself down for and, Mardi Gras. Uh, right. Everything shuts down in New Roads for Mardi Gras. And uh, the parade actually starts right here in front of the Does church. It? Yes. Awesome. Okay. And so we have a, we have a booth. We, okay. sell, we sell food uh, during the Mardi Gras. But it's a great celebration. Mm -hmm. It just lasts for the one day, and then people are back into Lent. Right. You know? but, and, but it raises some funds. It so does, So it is yeah. one, of your, one of the things that generates some uh, fun income coming in like other yeah. places do. Well, as I said, we don't have to worry too much about that. Which is because awesome. Because the parishioners here are extremely generous, and uh, we have no money problems. I shouldn't say that on national I television. but. <laughs> but it's a, it's a wonderful parish. We were talking about the generosity of the people here. Mm -hmm. One of the things I like to do in these shows is ask the, the pastor, you know, what's one thing that, that kind of um, stands out about your parishioners? And I'm getting those vibes that generosity, generosity. is one of the main things in this particular parish. Um, is there anything else? But pretty much that's where you see your parish's home? Yes. Kind of. the, yeah, the people, are, as I said, are very generous, not just with money, but with the, their time mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, their, their willingness to participate. Um, that's, a, that's really a big plus for any pastor. Um, Obvious, now, obviously, in your case, now talking about, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, get, I was, you were talking about uh, how long we're here. Right. Well, the, Jos the Josephite, is, uh, every Josephite priest gets a four-year term. Okay that can be renewed for four years. So eight is supposed to be our maximum. However, that's very negotiable. Okay. And I'm at my eighth year now, but I have a feeling that the superior is gonna leave me here for a while. We'll let you stay He'll here He'll let me stay while. a bit longer. 
And, and you know, the people seem reasonably happy. Oh, yes. You know, yeah. I, I, I don't think anybody wants to kick me out. But uh, this is a wonderful parish. I'd like to stay here for a few more years. That's amazing. Yeah. And you came from where? I came from Mobile, Alabama. From Mobile. Yeah. Okay. And uh, ooh, prior to that, I've served in Houston, uh, Pascagoula, uh, Washington, D.C., you know, all and, of And that's what makes it so special. I mean, I didn't mean to cut you off there, mm -hmm. but that's, you know, a lot of our parishes are diocesan priests, diocesan mm -hmm. run. You, you're, with it being an order run, you bring your experiences from other areas. From other areas, Into exactly. this area, which helps to influence a lot. Um, you know, for the parishioners. It does, and, and every area is so different, you know, and this this area here is very homey. Uh, the people are very friendly. Uh, real Louisiana hospitality here. Mm -hmm. and, and being in this New Roads area as well, I mean, they've got a long legacy, like you were saying. These, these are families upon families upon families who have been here from the um, within beginning. this area, and mm -hmm. although um, you were started in 1922, it draws from from all over because um, it's, it's a non-territorial parish. So, right. I mean, your boundaries are basically right close by, but from Immaculate Conception, from Ventress, from Rougon, you get yes, and we even get there. families <clears throat> that come in from Baton Rouge. Oh, really? You know, See? they drive in just to attend mass here. Probably because their ancestors, they're probably maybe they have roots, roots here. Yes. That's what makes it so great. That's and I find a lot of those that have roots in Bat that left here go to Baton Rouge because of Exxon, you know, back in mm -hmm. the 20s or whatever. When they retire, they come back they to come their back roots. They come back to their so You gain right. them back, you know, later. So, um, And that, that makes it special here, too, because, again, those ties run deep here. They do. That's it. Very much. Well, Father, thank you for being our guest it was today. A pleasure. And talking about yeah. this wonderful parish here. Folks, those of you out there, whether your roots are here or not, these are fabulous place, fabulous place to visit. Right, come and, and come visit. Have mass here. Come and visit. Yes, that's it. It'd be wonderful. All right.